Downstairs, uh, food, uh, coffee on the terrace if you're in a hurry. Uh, also, 4 o'clock this afternoon, the Hollywood Master Chorale in concert. Uh, let me see if I can do this from memory. Masterworks in March, uh, featuring the mass of uh, Anthony Shocks. Four Jocks D major and four Jocks of day to day. Wow, so some, some heavy duty stuff. Uh, with the, the chorale is about 30, 35 singers. It should be a splendid occasion uh, to, to hear that. And you can talk to either Ray or David about tickets and be here at four. Okay, great. Uh, this week, most of the usual things, uh, food pantry on Tuesday, potluck Bible study Wednesday, Thursday, our smart continuum, and also soup supper at 6 p.m., anywhere from 6 to 7 with our evening service at 7 p.m., so keep those in mind. This Saturday, I'll be starting an inquirer's class for those who want to know more about what it means to be a Christian, be a Lutheran, and be a member of this church. Uh, no obligation, but we invite you to join us if you're interested sat Saturday morning, 10-ish, something like that. Uh, keeping in our prayers, uh, Susan, talking to you, God bless you, uh, dealing with quite a bit of vertigo this last uh, week or so, but overcoming that, we're, we're glad you're vertical and not uh, on the floor. Mary Holman, uh, who is struggling, but getting over it, she's doing fairly well, herpes zoster at uh, how do we say this? What's the, what's the common name, Marie? Shingles. Shingles, but in the eye, uh, which has been very uncomfortable. But she's a great lady with a lot of faith, and she's overcoming it. I think she's going to be just fine. Uh, Bob's sister, Mary Halverson, sister-in-law, Mary Halverson, uh, with ovarian cancer. And please continue to lift up in prayer uh, Kathy Durkee Stevenson, who had a heart attack and heart surgery back in January. Uh, the, daughter of, of, of our former pastor of many, many years here. We still have candles lighted for those who have died recently, Joel Kaufman, Ray Hallowell, Ray, uh, Raul's uncle, and uh, the father of a distant cousin of mine, Carl Hooper, who also passed away recently. Let us then turn to the readings of the scriptures for today. Right hand. The sun will not set by day, nor the moon by night. 
you say?
that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Friends in Christ, may God's mercy and grace and peace come to you in full today. Amen. Well, for openers, this story in the gospel today is irresistible. And what makes it irresistible is, to me, because it's, it's really funny, sort of. One of the things that many people miss in, in reading this stuff, in considering Jesus, is the comical side, but it's there. The Bible has been made maybe too formal and, and beautiful and inspiring, and the funny stuff has kind of been covered over and, and forgotten. But as a recent veteran of the uh, episode of Check It Out with Dr. Steve Brule, I'm here to tell you to just lighten up, you know? Go with the flow. Even Christians can can go for the laughs now, time and again, as we see, I think, the evangelist John here doing reading. He tells the story of this encounter by, by playing up the ridiculous and allowing us to, to roll our eyes and laugh. Did you note the little detail? Probably uh, went right by it, but it's there. Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, came to Jesus by night. Just the two of them, in other words. Like, off the record. Can we talk, Jesus? Nicodemus wants to know, really, off stage and and away from the crowds, what makes Jesus tick? Nicodemus is, well, in the dark. That's the pun that's intended here. So John wants us to see this conversation as enlightening because Nicodemus is in the dark. And the evangelist here, the storyteller, enjoys the humor that Jesus serves one right past Nicodemus. Nicodemus wants to get Jesus talking about, you know, well, have you come from God? Or not. And Jesus seems to ignore that and, and, and says, well, no, let's talk about you. You're not even close to the presence of God, the kingdom of God, unless you were born again. Now, right here, let me just pause and explain that the Greek word in the, in the story here, the word anothen, is a little ambiguous. It can mean from above or it can mean again or anew. So there's a kind of a play on words going back and forth about what being born again, or born anew, born from above means. And we, of course, are in on this story as we know that Jesus wants to talk about big ideas and Nicodemus resists. He wants to talk about nuts and bolts stuff. <laughs> While Jesus wants to be cosmic, Nicodemus must, must uh, be literally contemplating his own navel or his own umbilical cord. You know? <laughs> like, how do you get back into your mother's womb? And Jesus sees planet Earth as the object of divine compassion. How do I get back inside the womb, Nicodemus says? Not in the womb, but born again, anew, from above. No, really, Nicodemus is saying. How do you get born again when you're already old? Jesus responds, Nick, God so loved the world. The world, dude! That is funny when you think of it. How can you not get it, Nicodemus, if you're a teacher of the faith? Well, now let me just, just for the fun of it, take Nicodemus' side for, for just a second. A, a lot of people of faith, a lot of people don't get it. People of faith sometimes fall into a rut, don't we? We think small and not big. When, when it comes to being born again, I suppose there's a lot of Baptists out there worrying whether the water in the baptismal font is the right temperature. And, and Catholics wonder, how many Hail Marys do you got to say? And Lutherans, oh my. As Garrison Keeler likes to remind us, Lutherans know that we are saved by grace, but think it's best to bring a covered dish just in case. <laughs> in case what? In case what? In case the kingdom of God isn't really this heavenly banquet after all, it's, it's a potluck, and we were supposed to bring something to the table? If religion is about rules and, and practices, 
Jesus tells Nicodemus, think about this from God's perspective. If you're born from above, you too can see. You too can sense. You can, you can understand and live what it means to be in God and to understand that God is all loving and, and all compassionate and all forgiving, all merciful. But let's be real with each other, okay? We are not all spiritual. We have bodies and appetites, personalities. We have histories. We have issues. A Jesuit priest named uh, Mark the Badu has written a couple of books on prayer, and the latest one is called, God, I Have Issues. <laughs> 50 ways to pray when, no matter how you feel. I have issues. In short, we're, we're human. Are we not? We are finite. We, we may feel spiritual at times, but probably not all the time. I know that preachers uh, are supposed to shake their fingers and preach about being human as if it's a sin to be human. But let's talk, okay? God made us human. We have different colors. We come in different sizes. We look different, think different. We feel different. We age different. We have different aptitudes and, and, and interests different sexualities. We have complexities that come with being alive in the body in real time in this world. And no, all of that, Jesus is chuckling over this, I just know he is, all of that can be stuffed back into the womb and come out again. All of our humanness is, it's a given. But to find the kingdom of God and enter the kingdom of God is to transcend our issues and, and our complexities and to overcome our fears and knock our roadblocks out of the way and to start over again with our lives. Amen? Amen. Inside of us, many of us, I'm sure, is this, this streak of this in-the-dark Nicodemus. We're a practical, everyday, no-nonsense, not particularly given to mysticism. Bring it on home, Jesus. How am I supposed to get born again, or from above. Evangelicals have this down, uh, down to science, I think. Just turn your heart over to God and say, Jesus, I want you to come into, into my heart. And, well, you know, I can't quibble with that, that feeling, but exactly how does that happen? I've had people admit to me that, that they got saved when they just turned their heart over to Jesus, and they even know the day and the hour that that happened. But then they admit, I gave my heart to Jesus, but my feet didn't follow. You know, I gave my heart to Jesus, my best intentions, but not the rest of my life. And so I, my life went back to alcohol or drugs or, or crack or crime or, or my life just went back to the daily grind, the, the Monday to Friday rat race, the, the distractions and the, and the pressures of the world that make us completely forget what it means to be spiritual. It says, Jesus, what is born of the flesh is flesh, but what's born of the spirit is spirit. In other words, what comes from our basic human existence is stuck, stuck in our basic human existence. But what we find, what we discover or bring to birth, which is really from God, is spiritual. It's different. It's far different. You don't find the spiritual by contemplating your own umbilical cord or wondering how to start over physically. You don't find God by studying your footprints or your shadow. Look up. Look beyond where you are and who you are. Look beyond your current situation or issues and your past experiences. The core message here, my friends, is to start over in our spiritual understanding. It can be as, as simple and as dramatic as stepping out of the darkness into the light. Can't it? Light is a big, big theme for John's Gospel. In chapter 1, he tells us that Jesus is the light of the world. Just as Genesis says, in the beginning God created light, let there be light. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was in God. And that Word was the light of the world. For the Gospel, seeing Almighty God, in Christ is this new beginning, a complete recreation of the world. 
And to be in Christ is to be a new creature, a new creation. Everything is different. Everything is new. In a practical terms, my friends, whatever, wherever you've been, it doesn't have to remain the same. In my own life, and I don't like to, you know, very often confess my sins from the pulpit, but in, in my life I have learned some lessons, and some of them took me an entire lifetime to learn. And one of them that I learned is, it seems so self-evident, you think, well, duh, but I'm not the same person that I was at 17 or at 28 or, or even at 40. I'm just not just different. I'm radically, seriously, totally different. I don't have to remain stuck in the life that I was living no longer am because I'm different. I don't have to defend who I had been if I'm being made new. I'm completely <coughs> free to start over again and be born again and understand myself differently. And, and as if I'm seeing myself for the first time in a brand new mirror, oh, I'm a new me. And really this isn't just some kind of platitude. I'm, I'm completely free to be a different person and to live a different life as different as I choose to be. Of course, that doesn't just mean, you know, like the pop beliefs about reincarnation. Like, when I come back, I'm going to be a rock star or a millionaire. No, it means when I decide, when I choose to put myself in sync with God's way of looking at the world, I'm going to be spiritually alive in a way that wasn't possible when I was stuck in my old ruts or when I was throwing myself a pity party at the bottom of my own hole. Hopefully we notice that the language about being born again here seems to echo some of the 12 steps on the climb to recovery. It's as if Nicodemus were in an AA meeting with Jesus. We admitted that we were powerless, fumbling in the dark. We came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. We made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood Him. And can I pause there a second? The phrase, as we understood Him, it doesn't mean that we have invented our own higher power, you know, like made the God that we want to believe in, made it to suit our liking. It means that the God who restores us to sanity is accessible, is close, available. God is there for us no matter what we understand. We don't have to be theologians or, or scholars or monks or, or even preachers, no matter how much or how little we may think we understand God. God is that power outside of ourselves, outside of our issues, who could bring us back to sanity. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. We admitted the exact nature of our wrongs. And, and this worked for us, say the, the people in recovery, this worked for us when we were entirely ready to have God remove all of our defects of character. In other words, we had to start over again in our consciousness of ourselves, of our issues, and see our, our own predicaments and challenges and opportunities the way God sees them. And the way God sees them is this, and you can commit it to memory if you, if you never did before, my paraphrase, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who comes to believe that a power greater than ourselves can restore us to sanity, everyone who believes in him will not perish, will not be lost, but will have life, abundant, eternal. My friends, whatever you were, feel free to reinvent yourself. Whatever your loyalties were, reconsider them. Whatever your, your Priorities. Reprioritize them. Whatever your past. Think about your future instead. Whatever baggage you've been carrying, just leave it behind. Whatever your issues, God has created you so much more important and valuable and loved than those issues. So instead of ducking change or, or resisting growth or, or avoiding uh, life with the cop-out that, nah, it's just the way I am. Consider another way, the way I can be, the person I can become, the, the life that I can live when I make that decision to turn my life, my will, over to the care of God 
who understands me. A new life awaits us, even if we feel like Nicodemus, even if we're old, we can't understand how God's Spirit's going to work for us. Do not be astonished, says Jesus. Do not be astonished. Go with the Spirit when the Spirit moves, where it wishes. It blows like the wind where it will be as, as free and as creative and as new and as promising today as if it was the day you were born. And you will be in that moment born again. Amen? Amen.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
thanks for the faithful departed who now rejoice in God's presence. Grant eternal light and consolation for our loved ones, especially Ray, Joel, Carl, and Lois. Comfort Oscar and all who grieve, and lead us to be faithful in our path of life. God in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. To be seated, our tithes and offerings will be received.
at your table and serving us with the food of eternal life. We who once were dead are now living members of your Son, awakened by the breathing of your Spirit. Send us out to awaken others to the mystery of your love, which is revealed to all the world in the one who came to give himself away. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord's body and his precious blood which you have received, strengthen your faith in trial and grant you grace for life. Amen. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the compassionate love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be upon you and be with you.